Hi guys and welcome to Journey to Journeyman episode number 33. This is just a quick side projects video from when I did my shaper vice jaws. There were so many little things that went on I had to do little side projects and this is two of them. I hope you enjoy this. Okay, I fought a good fight, but I'm tired of fighting it. Um, I'm having to stick in two other spacers in here to put a cutting tool in. And I'm trying to figure out my geometry and all the, you know, grinding on my cutting tools. And it's costing me so much time having to try to manipulate these two other things in here. So I'm going to make me a spacer out of this. I'm going to stop doing what I'm doing here. Make me something that will be a spacer in here. So let's get started. So I grabbed some drill rod and got started on it. Now one of the things that you will notice on here is that I will have different cutters in there with different geometry and different angles just trying to figure out what cuts best. Now the tools that I'm using I found at a flea market and there are so many guys that get on there and they find gold at these flea markets. I've only been to two and I've only found some cutters. And I, I bought those cutters and it, they're already been ground by somebody. So I'm just trying those out to see which one will cut the best. But this tool I ground myself. So that's that pass. Now we'll flip it over and do the other one. Not a bad surface finish, not perfect, but I'm still learning how to grind tools. Okay, I wish I could remember who did it, and I, I can't remember what video they even commented on, but commented on that is. But somebody asked me about this block and how it was, and I said it was fine. When I installed it, I thought it was fine. But now that I'm running it, it is really sloppy in there. 20, 21 thousandths, and you can, let's see if we can see it. Uh, maybe it's better if I turn it by hand but there is all kinds of play in there um, and I'm hearing a knock and I'm thinking this might be the cause of the knock so I'm doing a temporary fix of this this is about 18 thousandths aluminum shim and I'm putting this in here and I'm bending it uh, bending the top and the bottom to keep it from sliding up and down and I'm hoping this will uh, will be a temporary fix for me until I can figure out what I want to do with that um, I like this block how it's machined it has this uh, oil groove here um, I may try to put some I saw some guys uh, on a forum that had brazed the side of that and then machined it down um, not sure so I'm right now like I said I'm just going with a temporary shim in here happy with that so that'll be our temporary fix and I'll try to figure out uh, what to come in a, as a permanent fix and get this nice and lubed and get the cover back on all right back to trying to cut metal so let's cut this thing so there I was and yes folks another fighter pilot story coming out I was in Kunsan, Korea doing a normal bombing training sortie and uh, we typically drop six uh, practice bombs and we do a strafing of a hundred rounds of ammunition, 20 millimeter ammunition. Now my crew chief told me that they needed to get rid of tracers and that my airplane was loaded up with a hundred percent tracers and I didn't think anything about it. I said, okay. Now normally if they were going to use tracers, they, they put tracers in about every seven rounds. And on training missions, we don't fly with tracers at all. 
Now, after dropping all six of my bombs, I set up for my first strafing run. Now, the F-16 shoots 6,000 rounds per minute, which is 100 rounds per second. So, on a normal strafing training sortie, what we do is we have 100 rounds, and we shoot a half a second burst on the first pass, and we empty the gun on the second pass. Okay. <laughs> Gonna have to take off a little bit more. Meanwhile, back on my F-16 loaded up with 100% tracers, I take my first pass, and I'm going to squeeze off a half a second burst. And at about as soon as I pull the trigger, I let off because it looked like an absolute laser beam going out of my airplane. It totally startled me. The next thing I noticed is how high the rounds were above where I had aimed. Now, the computer put the pipper exactly where the bullets were going to go, which means that they're going to be aimed high. And sure enough, they arced down and all started hitting the target. Now, the next thing that startled me is all the ricochets up. They had always told us, be careful, don't pull up lazy, pull up 5Gs to get away from the ricochets. I'm like, well, you never saw them until I saw those tracers. Okay. Now I'm going to make a flat on both of these sides. I've sped it up this time. Yeah, this is real time, but I'm going a little bit faster on the stroke. Now on my second strafing pass, I was at least aware of what was going to happen. And I, sure enough, I came in aimed and I uh, emptied the gun. And it was absolutely amazing seeing what looked like a tube of red water, like a laser beam going out, hitting the target, you know, looking high initially, arcing down into the target, and then all the ricochets again. And trust me, I didn't, didn't mess around on my pull off on this second one because I could see all the ricochets coming up. And uh, it was absolutely awesome witnessing that. This is kind of what it looks like, but this is a helicopter firing a minigun with a similar rate of fire, but with tracers every fifth round. And what a once in a career event that was for me. All right, so... Here we go. Let's get this what I've been trying to make. There we go. And after doing these couple of side projects, I got back into making my shaper jaws. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. There'll be one more side project video coming up. Hopefully I'll have more of my shot put back together. I got a little bit of the shaper and hopefully I can show you uh, my new shop setup, which is a temporary little setup. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I thank you for watching and I hope to see you on the next Journey to Journeyman.